This area was mined for many years. It's a huge pit in the ground, but we are turning it into a good looking wetland. We are restoring a sand plain prairie. This dugout area is about two acres total and we're hoping to create a one acre of vernal pools, which is gonna be five different vernal pools. And then that other acre is gonna be sort of a wet meadow buffer in between the pools. This is an example of the upland. We're gonna to try to convert 11 acres of the upland into sampling grassland habitat. These two unique habitats will help benefit each other. The upland will provide area for hunting for raptors, while the vernal pool area will provide a variety of different insects and aquatic life. So what makes a vernal pool special as opposed to a pond is that there are no fish in it, so that the fish typically will eat the aquatic insect life. So as we're providing extra insects, we'll attract more wildlife such as ducks, different species of invertebrates, uh, reptiles, amphibians, migrating shorebirds. And the reason that we are creating five vernal pools is because we're targeting the eastern spadefoot toad, which <coughs> likes a very shallow vernal pool. And so by having these five different depths of pools, we're hoping that on any given year, the water table will be just right in at least one of these pools for the spadefoot toad. So right now it looks pretty barren, but once we reseed it and the vegetation establishes. It's going to be about two acres of habitat. Today our operator is creating the vernal pools. What he's doing is uh, using a DC-6 to scrape large amounts of sand and storing them back into the bank. Uh, our vernal pools that we are creating are very shallow, so he's only taking about a foot to two feet of soil out of the pit at a time and getting down to the water table. It's pretty exciting that it is April and we have had a lot of water because if we were doing this, say in August or in the fall, there wouldn't be any water to see. It would just look like a scraped out sand mine and it would be kind of hard to understand why we're doing it. So being able to see the water is a good sign. As you can see, the edges of the pools are not straight lines. We purposely created them kind of messy and roughed up, targeting various wildlife species. We save the sedges because they're easy to replant. In addition to the sedges that we saved, we intend on seeding a native wet mix variety to help outcompete any of the invasive species that might take root. We also plan on following up with invasive control anywhere in the wetland project area. We are restoring a sand plain prairie, one of the rarest habitats, uh, a globally endangered ecosystem. Due to the development of Cape Cod, we've lost a lot of these habitats. By providing 15 acres, we'll be able to target bird species that have a minimum threshold of 10 acres. The dozer is loosening compacted soils. They brought in hundreds, if not thousands, of huge trucks to haul the sand out of here over the years, and they compacted areas, and we know that where we have compacted soil, the plants won't grow. So what the dozer is doing is following the road, loosening the compacted soil, and then reshaping it so it looks like a natural environment out here. The dozer operator can actually feel the compacted soils beneath the heavy equipment, digging deep into the ground to unearth the sand beneath, and then mixing this loose soil. When a sand mine is abandoned, it would be really easy to develop it because it's cleared. We have a really unique and rare opportunity to restore it to something environmentally functioning for a variety of habitats, to target rare species through the grassland and to have a vernal pool. The 300 committee played a key role in enabling the town to purchase this property. That partnership is pretty rare and special and it provided us with an opportunity to restore a parcel and to preserve it in perpetuity. We hope that by showing the success that can take place here and that hopefully will, that we can serve as some inspiration for other mine owners to show what can happen with a parcel rather than going the development route.
The town of Falmouth is going to have a beautiful looking landscape out here. There's going to be wildflowers. There's going to be just this diversity of wildlife. There's going to be the wetlands and all the native prairies surrounding them. This is truly going to be a unique place on Cape Cod and one that I hope that people will come out and visit in the future.